I just started building the circuit for the analog computer and I realized we might as well go through the power supply of this computer right now because we need this power supply to work in the simulation. In this power supply circuit, what we have is this 20 volt source. So this might be just a battery or something or just might be my DC power supply. We might just turn this into 9 volts so we could just use a 9 volt battery and make this computer more portable. But we'll determine that way later in this project. So essentially we have this power supply being connected to two series resistors which creates a voltage divider. And these resistance values are equal in value so that if we probe right directly in between the resistors, we divide the voltage equally by two. This output voltage is 10 volts if you probe from here and to ground. But the problem with this voltage divider is that if you connect any kind of load to this virtual ground, which we're going to be using this as a virtual ground for all the op amps, if we add a load to this, the voltage divider is no longer dependent on these two resistors. Rather, it's dependent on these two resistors plus whatever else the circuit is, which is just that additional load, which can be isolated down into an additional resistor in parallel to R2. So to maintain that equal balance of splitting this voltage supply by two, we have to isolate this power supply from the rest of the circuit. And a way to do that is by using a voltage follower. And that's because the op amp has a very high impedance between these two inputs. And additionally, it has very low output impedance. So we could send that 10 volts created by this voltage divider through this voltage follower and send it out and isolate that ground from the rest of the, from the, rest of the circuit. If we add a load from here, from this point to ground, it will not affect the voltage divider. Essentially, that's all there is to the power supply of the system, so I'm going to run a simulation to show you how this works. So if we put a test probe right here at the end of the voltage divider, you can see that it outputs 10 volts, which is equal to 20 divided by 2 due to these two resistive values. So I was going to design the integrator in the simulation, but I really decided to just actually build the circuit as I build it in the simulation. So therefore, I could test it in the simulation and then test it in real life and see if there's any complications between the two. So maybe there's some sort of thing that the simulation doesn't take account of when I build it in practice. So therefore, I could be more error resistant when building the circuit because I don't want to build the whole circuit and start guessing where the problem is if the simulation didn't take account for some practical issues. So let's just begin designing this bad boy right here, the simple power supply. And to begin with that, I wanna really create a clean looking circuit on this breadboard. So I'm gonna cut my own wires to the correct length so we can use that instead of just a jungle of jumping wires from, from a previous Arduino that I had. I'm gonna begin building little wires for the circuit. Here's the power supply of the circuit. You can see the voltage divider right here and right here, and this is gonna be the voltage follower or that other op amp to isolate the power supply from the rest of the circuit. So to be very meticulous with this project, I wanted to calculate the error from this power supply. So these two leads right here and right here are giving a 20 volt, and that's being sent to this voltage divider. Now I measured the voltage input, which turned out to be 19.79, so that's just an error built in in my DC power supply. I also measured the resistance values of these 1K resistors, and they're not exactly 1K, but they're pretty close to each of the respective values. One is 986 ohms, the other is 985 ohms. So the resistance values are practically identical. So the theoretical output from these voltage values and these resistance values should end up being around 9.89 volts. However, when I test the voltage output, it's actually greater. So it's actually 9.97, which is closer to that voltage divider of 20 volts. So the voltage input from the DC power supply is roughly 19.82. So the output should be roughly 9.41 or something like that. So if I keep this at ground, so I'm using this probe right here, this jumper wire, and measuring the voltage output from the ground. So you can see that this value is close to 10, but although the theoretical value should be closer to 9.89. So there is some error output from this. 
So based off those measurements, we get an error output of 0.81%, which is pretty negligible in my opinion, but we'll see how this error magnifies as we build the rest of the circuit, because this may be crucial, it may not be, I'm not too sure, too sure, but we'll be able to see later on. So it appears that the power supply of this circuit seems to be running well. So now I can begin creating the rest of the circuit, starting with that op-amp integrator.